Imagine some of the things that you could accomplish because you can hear from God. Imagine some of the traps that you would avoid if you would hear from God. Imagine some of the decisions that you would make if you could hear from God. Now the problem is not God. God's speaking. But the issue is, are we picking up the, uh, the, the transmission? Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages with each message that you download. Let's begin tonight in Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27 as we, we deal with what I believe is a vital series concerning hearing from God. Imagine some of the things that you could accomplish because you can hear from God. Imagine some of the traps that you would avoid if you would hear from God. Imagine some of the decisions that you would make if you could hear from God. Now the problem is not God. God's speaking. But the issue is, are we picking up the, uh, the, the transmission? He's saying stuff, but what, what is it on our part? It's not on his part. It's not, oh, God, say something. Please say something. I can't hear you. Well, the problem is you can't hear him. You know, it's not, he's not talking. And so we'll begin tonight. I want to show these two scriptures and we'll move on. Proverbs 20 and, verse, and verse 27. And in Proverbs 20 and verse 27, he says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. So the spirit of man. Now, let's go back to the triune part of man. Man is a spirit being. He possesses a soul. He lives in a body. Man does not have a spirit. You don't have a spirit. You are spirit beings you possess a soul that's your mind will emotions your thinker your filler your chooser and you live in a physical body now what this scripture says is that god is going to use your spirit man just like you and i would use a candle now just think for a moment if the power were to go off in the house and you would get a candle and light that candle that candle would provide what guidance for you so likewise, God says, the way that I am going to provide guidance for you is through your spirit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use your spirit and guide you through your spirit. Now, you got to understand that your spirit is sealed with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And the Holy Ghost begins to instruct your spirit. And then from your spirit, that which the Holy Spirit and your spirit has agreed upon, it, 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 it comes to your conscious and your conscious mind is the voice of your spirit. Your conscious mind is the voice of your spirit. So the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. And so you, you understand that and, 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 and praise God, it'll, it'll take you far. Now go to John chapter 10 and uh, verse 27. John 10, 27. Notice what he says here. He says, my sheep hear my voice. Oh, glory to God. So if you're born again, you're in the sheepfold. And he says, my sheep hear my voice. And he says, what? And I know them and what? And they follow me. So now, if you're not hearing God's voice, and he just said, my sheep hear my voice, then what's the problem? What's the issue here? My sheep hear my voice. You and I should be hearing God's voice. Now, before I dig into this uh, a little bit more, I, I want to do something. I thought about the banking system and there are certain safeguards that the banking system puts up to be able to protect your money as far as other people come in and get it there are certain things you have to do that will safeguard your your account well there are some safeguards in in hearing from God in other words how do you know that you've heard from God 
uh, you know, somebody says, I heard from God. What are, what are some safeguards to protect you from all of those other voices? Some safeguards that will protect you from the voice of, of, of the enemy. So here are five safeguards to help you know that what I heard, that, that came from God. All right, five of them. Can you use these? Five of them. Number one, when God speaks... Number one, it will go against reasons and rationalizations of the world. When God speaks, it will go against reasons and rationalizations of the world. So you don't have to be surprised if God is saying something to you and it's going against the reasoning of the world. Hey, Pastor Number son. one. Number two, when God speaks, it lines up with the written word of God. When God speaks, it lines up with the written word of God. God is never going to say anything to you and it be totally opposite of what he's allowed to be written in the word of God. God's written word and God's rhema word are the same. So literally when you hear something, the next thing you need to be doing is going searching the scripture and see if you can find it in the scripture. Amen. Here's number three. Here's the third safeguard. The third safeguard, guard. When God speaks, it requires faith. God will never say anything to you that doesn't require faith in order to take possession of it. Everything that God will ever speak is going to require faith. So if you think for some reason you heard God say something and you're just going to sit there and it's just going to voila, no. Everything that God speaks requires faith. I mean, when God spoke to me about, you know, this church, it required faith in order to come to pass. Sometimes people miss it because a prophet will come and actually be right on with what he said to you. Well, how do you know? I'm going to go check it in the Word. Uh, and, and if it is, it's still going to require faith on your part to walk it out. So you don't be so quick to say he's a false prophet uh, versus saying you're a lazy Christian and, you wouldn't, and you, wouldn't, you wouldn't walk it out in faith. Amen? Number four. Number four, the fourth safeguard. When God speaks, now this is something that really got me years ago, it will require courage. It requires courage. Be strong and of good courage. Take I mean, to be able to have enough courage to actually step out in your faith and believe it. When God says something to you, it's going to require courage. You've got to ask yourself, do I have the courage to... Uh, you know, uh, put myself in a position to it, hear what he says and to know that was God. Sufficient. If it requires courage, it came from God. If it requires faith, it came from God. If it lines up with his written word, it came from him. If it goes against reason and rationalization, it came from him. But here's a, one of the most important ones. When God speaks, there will be peace. Peace will rule as an umpire. In fact, the scripture says, let peace rule as an umpire in your heart. If you hear something and it brings confusion and it brings fear, most likely that did not come from God. It might have come from the back part of your mind, but it didn't come from God. Because when God speaks, there's a peace that's with it. And, and listen, when God told me to do several things at one time, there still was peace there. Now, I might have had some weird things going on in my head, but I had peace in my heart. How many of you know you can have doubt in your head and faith in your heart? Amen. You, you understand what I'm saying? And so when, when God speaks, there's peace. The umpire of peace will be there and call that thing safe. All right? So these are, these are things you carry with you as you begin to learn how to hear from God. And it's vital. It's vital to hear from God. I, I mean, I, I don't know if, if there's been a day that I hadn't heard from him in some aspect of something. You know, I was asking the Lord the other day. I said, you know, God, I'm sitting here reading about Tabitha. And, you know, she died. She was a disciple of yours. And Peter happened to be around. And they went and got Peter. And Peter put everybody out of the room. And he just simply said to Tabitha, you know, uh, wake up. And, and, and she got up. And the Bible says they heard about it. And many believed. Many believed. And I'm like, God, you know that's my heart. I said, I, I, I'm trying to, I want to do things that will cause people that don't believe to believe. And I said, so here it is, God. There's signs and wonders, and the signs and wonders cause them to believe. And I said, so God, tell me what I need to do, watch this, 
so that I can do the signs and wonders. Now, what I really, what I was really saying was, show me what I need to do so I can deserve generation the signs and wonders. And he said, and he, and he, he spoke it to me. You know, he told, he told me two, two weeks ago, but prior to this conversation, he says, I already told you. And I thought, oh yeah, you did. And what he told me was, uh, you don't need to look to do something to deserve signs and wonders. He says, I am the one that's responsible for signs and wonders. You practicing the presence of God and you taking my presence with you every when, when you show up, I show up, signs and wonders show up. And then he told me, he said, there are signs and wonders taking place over the stream that you don't even know about. And next day I went in the office and there were some testimonies of some signs and wonders that I didn't know. See, what we need to do is just practice the presence of the Holy Spirit. What we need to do is to get to know him and to fellowship with him and show up with him. And when you show up with him, the signs and wonders will be there and they'll believe because of who you with. Romans 12, okay. 1 and 2. All right, so real quick. I want to really get this in your heart and really build your faith up where hearing from God is concerned. So let's look at some scriptures in the Old Testament. I want to prove a point. God spoke to man in the Old Testament. Go with me through these scriptures real quick. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. God spoke to men in the Old Testament. Now verse 16, he says, And the Lord God commanded the man... He commanded the man, watch this, he was saying to the man, here's what, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, uh, but of the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil thou shalt not eat it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. God said that to doing. man. Shouldn't have been no confusion at all in the garden. They're up there talking to the devil. Why are you talking to the devil? God said what he said to man. So God is speaking to man even here in the book of Genesis. Now look at Genesis chapter 6, verses 12 through 16. Let's look at Noah. So God speaks to man in Genesis 2, 16. Genesis 6, 12 through 16. Now something very specific and interesting about Noah. He didn't talk to Noah in vague impressions. He talked to Noah in specific details. And this is to show you that God can, wow. he can tell you where to go, what time to go, when to he go, when to turn, nice what to do when you get there. Amen. Amen. You don't have to show up, you know, not knowing what's, what's happening. Look at this verse 12. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. God's talking to Noah. Make an ark of gopher wood. Room shall, shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without. He's talking to him. Go to the next. Uh, 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 yeah, we're going to go to verse 16. Verse, verse 15. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. What? The breadth of it, 50 cubits. The height of it, 30 cubits. A window shall thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shall thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof, with the lower, second, and third stories shall thou make it. And you talking about you heard from the Lord, what did he say, I don't know? Not only can God speak, you see God speaking here in specific details. In specific details. And you can believe God to speak to you in specific details. There's sometimes I'm like, well, you know, Lord, I, I, I hear you loud and clear, but it's so specific. It's so specific. i never forget when I was riding on the plane one time and the Lord said, all right, son, uh, 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 keep your emotions together. Something's getting ready to happen with the plane. I'll protect your life. And in three seconds, there it is. I'm, all, I'm already ready to go. Specific details God will begin to speak to you. All right, let's, let's travel a little bit more into Genesis. Genesis 22, let's look at verse 10 through 12, and then verse 15 through 18. Genesis 22, 10 through 12, and then 15 through 18. See, you, you got to understand, he did not talk to Noah in vague impressions. He spoke to him in specific details. I believe that there's some of you, both here and over the stream, 
You need to hear from God. And he'll talk to you in specific details. Verses 10 through 12 says, And Abraham Come stretched forth his hand, took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord, I wish I had time to talk to you. This was not just an angel of the Lord. This was the angel of the, the Lord. Okay, I'm going to say this. Christ. I don't have time to teach on it, but I'll deal, deal with it later, hopefully. This was Jesus before he came to the earth in a physical body. This was the angel of the Lord. That's how he referred to Jesus before he came to the body. In the beginning, uh, let us. King of. He was a part of that us in the beginning. And so the angel of the Lord Abraham called unto him out of heaven and said, guys. Abraham, Abraham, he said, here I am. And he said, now, now, now notice now, he, he's talking, soul. right? Here I am. And he's he said, king and lay not and thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from him. He's talking to him. Had he not spoken to him, he would have killed his son. I'm telling you, God will talk to you about daily things that are happening around your life. God will talk to you, hey, don't go there. I was on my way to uh, a part of Africa, and uh, we, I landed in London for a, uh, a, a layover, and, and, and I, I went to bed that night, and I heard God. He said, do not proceed on this journey. There is danger there. I said, what? This is a real wild story. I, I don't have time to tell all of it, but we called the guy to see where what was going on there, and, and then the phone rang, and then we called him back, and then the guy picked up. At, well, no, a guy, somebody, I don't, somebody picked up the phone the first time we called, and it said, "Don't come here," and hung the phone up. And then we called back because you know he kind of hung the phone up, and we and then we and, then, and the guy who owned the phone answered the phone. He said, "Hello," and uh. <laughs> And then the guy that was with me said, hey, who was that just picked the phone up and, and, and was rude like that and hung up on me? He says, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, what I just called? I don't know what you're talking about. The phone was locked up. I just unlocked it because I saw the light going on and I picked it up and I answered it. And he told me that. I'm like, we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> we ain't going nowhere. God will speak to you about everyday situations. Amen. Look at verse 15 through 18. He says, and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. Look at there. And, uh, and said, by myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessings I'll bless you, in multiplying I'll multiply thy seed as the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and, and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemy. Verse 18. He says, and in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. You've obeyed my voice. That's the voice of the Jesus before he got his body. Angel don't speak with this kind of authority. Amen. So Abraham could hear God in crucial times because he had been hearing him all along. He'd been hearing him all along. So in crucial times where he's getting ready to kill his son, he could hear. You better, my no, let me say that. You, mi you might need voice. to make sure you learn how to hear from God now. So when a crucial they time will. comes up, you can hear from him then. Obey. Don't wait to try to hear from God in a bad situation when you've been ignoring him all along. Let's practice hearing from God in our day to day. Amen. Look at this, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Love this. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. You know, and I, I, I'm showing you this because, I, 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 first of all, I want you to see he's talking to these people in the Old Testament. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. And the child Sam, uh, Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision to. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out into the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid there, laid down to sleep. 
that the Lord called Samuel and he answered, here am I. Must have been so clear that when he called and he said, here I am. Samuel, here I am. You ever been somewhere you thought somebody called you? You know, when people tell me, did you say something? You say, no, that must have been the Lord. You better answer. I think God talked to here me I am. Australian. And he man. ran unto Eli and said, here I am. For thou calleth me, and he said, I called not. I ain't called you. Thank you mate. Lie down again. And he went and he lay down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here am I. For thou didn't call me. And he, he answered, I, 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 I ain't called you, or I called not. <laughs> I called not my son. Call it Paul. I ain't call you. <laughs> go, on, let, go on, go back to bed. Lay down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. <laughs> oh, glory. Now, first of all, I want you to know servants heareth. Servants heareth. So Samuel went, and he laid down in his place. And then 10, and the Lord came. And stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, speak, for thy servant heareth. I mean, how do you deny that God wants to speak to us? And yet when you say that, and, and even with, it used to be just with unsaved people. But when you say that around saved people, they think something must be wrong with you. All right? Look at Jeremiah chapter 1. Four and five. Sometime. Jeremiah chapter one, four and five. God longs to communicate your purpose of your life to you. God wants to talk to you about what you're supposed to do. He wants to. He's not trying to check it out. He's God. He's not trying to not say what you need to hear. He said this, Jeremiah one, four and uh, five. He said, then the word of the Lord came unto me, Jeremiah, saying, before I formed thee in, thy, in the belly. God is saying this to him. God is speaking this to him. We read it just scripture, but I want you to see it in context. God is talking to Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of, thy, of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. God wants to tell you about, about the will of God for your life. But you've got to believe, first of all, that he speaks and he wants to speak to you. Now, here's my point. Now, if God spoke to people in the Old Testament under the Old Covenant, then under the New Covenant, we should enjoy at least equal privileges. But Hebrews says that we have a better covenant. And we got a better covenant and can't hear from God? Everybody knows that doing what God says can literally save your life. But do you wonder how to hear him in the first place? Crefloe Dollar shows you how to fine-tune 